Welcome to St. Michael's service on Transfiguration Sunday. We each have to worship at home, but God calls us all together to worship him and to learn to love. So let us draw near to God. For God comes and does not keep silent. God calls us all and wants to transform us. Let us worship God and let us pray. Almighty God, our loving parent, we praise and adore you. We're thankful for your grace and love, for your teaching us through the prophets, through your word and holy healing spirit. We thank you for guiding us towards a life lived in service of you and each other. Lord, we come knowing that we are not perfect, but come as we are, gifted and flawed, with all our wonders, hopes and desires. We come to you joyful, hopeful and positive. We come also broken, doubtful and fearful. But we come trusting you, yearning to know more, to see more, to love more. Grant us the wisdom to follow you and to seek your kingdom and your presence in our times of trouble and doubt, uncertainty and fear. Like Peter, James and John, May we scale mountains to see you, to know you, to understand what you are calling us to be. Grant us the wisdom to follow you and seek your kingdom. Lord, help us to live your way, to carry out your mission and commandment to love. Grant us the wisdom to follow you and seek your kingdom. We ask when we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us now sing hymn 39, which is Psalm 50, the psalm for today. God the Lord, the King Almighty, calls the earth from east to west, shining out from Zion's splendor, city loveliest and best. Comes our God, he breaks the silence, robed in burning majesty. Gather all my covenant people, bound by sacrifice to me. Hear me testify against you, listen Israel as I speak. I do not require your offerings, sacrifice I do not seek. Mountain birds and meadow creatures, cattle on a thousand hills, all the beasts of my possession, moving as the maker wills. God who owns the whole no gift, no food, no house. Bring to him your heart's thanksgiving. God most high will hear your vows. Trust in him the day of trouble. Call to him who will redeem. God will Daily theme. 
lies in Greece and evil prospers. God is silent while men say he has gone, let us forget him. Thinking he is false as they, but his word will judge or save us. Let us come before his throne, giving thanks, receiving mercy. God's salvation now made known. Today is Valentine's Day when people sometimes receive a card with a message of love from a secret admirer, or not so secret. If you were to send a message of love and admiration to someone, who would you choose? Your mum or dad? A colleague? A friend? Someone you love? If you could send a Valentine's card to a prominent person, who would you choose and why? I wonder. Today's gospel story brings together Jesus and a couple of his friends with the two most famous people from the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah. Listen to the story from Mark's gospel, chapter 9. Today's gospel reading comes from Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. The Transfiguration. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Some time ago, I attended a service and ecumenical discussion and came away grumpy. It was an interfaith meeting hosted by a Jewish congregation. We received a warm welcome and were guided through their service, parts in Hebrew and parts in English. Some parts were said and some were sung. The Torah, what we call the Old Testament, was taken out of its special cupboard at the front called the Ark, and paraded round the room, and then it was read. 
There was great reverence attached to it. There was a short sermon. And most surprising to me, at the end of the service, everyone was given a small glass of grape juice and invited to break bread off a loaf. Does this remind you of something? I was not grumpy then, but happy and felt privileged to experience another faith tradition and one from which our faith grew. We were then treated to a feast of cakes and cups of tea. It was splendid. After that, an interfaith scripture reading took place. A rabbi, an imam, and a Christian nun each spoke to a passage from their scriptures on the topic of the environment. Then we were to discuss the texts in mixed faith groups. And this is when I really became grumpy. Not with those of another faith, but with my fellow Christians. Some there, some Christians present, said that they did not worry about the environment, as God would come and sort it out, all out anyway. So why bother? They would all be in heaven. Well, all the fine words we had said in praise of the Creator earlier were certainly not heard by them. Instead of being stewards of creation, they were content to be users of God's handiwork. And love your neighbor who are suffering because of climate change, it seemed they only cared about loving God and ignored the second half of Jesus' greatest commandment. By the end of the evening, I had had enough of religion, for a while at least. Many people are fed up with institutional religion. Many, young and old, feel that churches are not really dealing with the issues of our day, issues they are facing. So why come? But God, who made heaven and earth, means to niggle and shake us humans time and time again into new awareness. The aim and point of our worship is to help each other to listen for the voice of God. Jesus Christ is for Christians the image of the living God showing us the divine in a way we can understand. However, at times, we still come to the limit of understanding, as in our gospel story today. Jesus took Peter, James, and John up a high mountain. There, they had a vision of Jesus meeting the most famous people of the Old Testament, Moses, who received the Ten Commandments from God, and Elijah, who stood up for God against worldly authority. Remember the stories of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel and the Baal priests fighting him and fighting God? What do you do when you meet someone famous? Scream in delight or gaze in awe? Try and get an autograph, picture or even a selfie? Peter, always eager to be helpful, made the almost laughable offer of building three shelters he wanted to capture the moment with practical action. Typical Peter. Can we blame him? Peter wants to capture the moment and treasure it. But the most precious moments of our lives are fleeting. They have to be lived and experienced, but not be held. Mark, who wrote the gospel, the stories of Jesus down, is trying hard to help us make this special moment in Jesus and the disciples' life prominent in his story. There is the story of the transfiguration, which is placed at the center of Mark's gospel. It is the start of the second half of the gospel. Jesus' road to suffering follows. At the beginning of Mark's gospel, the baptism of Jesus we heard a very similar story. There Jesus is disclosed as the Son of God by God's voice, calling him the Beloved. And all the elements of today's story point 
out that here is no ordinary mortal, but the Son of God in the spotlight. The high mountain, the bright clothes, Jesus and Elijah's presence, the overshadowing cloud, and the voice are all elements from the Old Testament stories where God reveals himself to Moses and Elijah, Daniel, and all the people of Israel. So hear the voice of God. Here, the voice of God addresses the listening disciples, us as well, directly. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Well, do we listen? Do we hear? Who do we listen to? The noise in our world is deafening. The rattle of engines, screaming of alarms, prattle of conversations, the insistence of advertising, and at the moment, 24-hour news, if you choose to listen to it, from all corners of the world with bad news. The pings of social media on top of conversations we have with friends and family. How can God's voice fit in there? How can we discern among all this what God is saying to us? Listen to my beloved son. Paul warns the Corinthians of the God of this world blinding people and preventing them from seeing the glory of God as revealed in the face of Christ. Nothing much seems, of to, change, seems to have changed. As Moses' face shone after his conversations with God, so Paul imagines Jesus' face shining with the glory of God. He wrote, for it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But even Peter, so ready, so longing to find the Messiah in Jesus, so open to the glory of God at times, cannot get his head around what this Messiah, this Jesus is. He's keen on the glory, but just before our passage, he contradicts Jesus when Jesus tells his friends that he will have to suffer and die before being resurrected. Peter, as any of us, is not keen to hear about suffering. And even if we hear, listening to what is being said is at times beyond our comprehension until much later, after the events. The disciples are told to keep quiet about the vision and what they have heard until Jesus had risen from the dead. And on the way down, they discuss what on earth risen from the dead could mean. The fact is that God is beyond all human understanding and all our words and concepts are poor attempts to grasp the unknowable source of life. We can understand bits. We can explore the intricate laws of nature, the way subatomic particles work, the forces of the universe, the depths of the sea, or the way neurons in the brain enable communication or movement. And we will learn more in all these fields. But God is beyond our understanding, apart from the glimpses of glory and the revelation God has made of himself through prophets of old and most fully through Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen then to the beloved who like Moses talked to God face to face and brought us knowledge of his will. Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Listen to beloved, who like Elijah was not feared of powers and authorities, but brought good news to all people and spoke truth to the powers of his time. Listen and follow in the footsteps of Jesus to be the people of God together. An Anglican priest called Simon Bailey, who lived and worked in Sheffield until 1995, until he died from AIDS, wrote this. A dream. 
I am dreaming about a church of sensitivity and openness, a church of healing and welcome. I am dreaming about a community of friends that celebrate differences and diversity and variety, a community that is forgiving, cherishing, wide open. I dream of men and women who minister life and laughter and love, of men and women who minister healing and harmony and hope, of women and men who minister to each other and minister to the crying needs of the world that hurts. I dream against the rough climb still to come, against expectation, against pessimism and despair. I dream, I dream of the clear panorama of the vision of light right at the top of the mountain. Let's join the dreamers. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Heavenly Ghost. All we have comes, O Lord, from you. Bless the gifts we bring, and bless all our giving, to serve the building of your kingdom, and for the healing of those suffering, and for the glory of your name. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for all your support that you give to the work of God's kingdom in any way at all. And thank you for your giving to St. Michael's. Now let us pray for others and for ourselves. Let us pray. Help us today, O God, to see you shining in glory as we scale our own mountains, as we seek to overcome our own hurdles, as we face fear and indecision on our way to a better life lived in love with you. Help us today, O God, to find purpose as we seek to serve you, as we seek to serve one another, as we look for ways we can make change in this world to bring your promised kingdom ever closer to all whom we meet. Help us today, O God, as we see Jesus in our own lives, as we struggle to understand him, as we try to carry out his mission, as we attempt to bring peace, love and faith to this world of pain, as we follow in his footsteps, the footsteps of our ancestors in faith. Lord, we ask you to bless all who need you especially today, the lonely, the overburdened, the sick and the grieving. Give strength and comfort to all who need it, and may we go and be your servants in every way you want us to serve. All this we ask in the name of Christ our Lord, to whom be all glory and honour with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us now sing hymn 353, Bright the Cloud and Bright the Glory. Bright the cloud and bright the glory, bright our Father, mere sun's rays, opening up a glimpse of heaven to disciples all strong gaze. Power plus the comprehension, splendor to profound for praise. All was changed, all was changed, they would never be the same. Bright the cloud, but dark the glory, wrought by human enterprise. Opening wide with awful terror, stark new worlds before our eyes. Power grasped by far from mastered, knowledge came but not yet wise. All was changed, all was changed, we shall never be the same. From the cloud and from the glory, human knee brought Jesus down. Down to earth and from death rising to receive a victor's crown. Lead us, Christ, to prize compassion, more than riches or renown. Help us change. Help us change, may we never be the same. So go to love and serve the Lord. Open your eyes to God's glory in creation. Listen for his voice in scriptures and in the words of your friend and neighbour. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>